afterward. Let's imagine for a moment that what you hold in your hands is an extraordinarily enthralling work of fiction of the highest order. As you know, that's not truly the case, but let's pretend. Now, let's say you finish reading it, and in that very instant, you scream. This writer is a genius! I don't know if you'd really scream that sort of thing, but let's say the writer of this book is of the subject of such praise. But such expressions sound not unlike excuses of the common man, as if claiming, that person is ingenious. In other words, he's of a superior race, totally separate from you and me. So of course he'd do things that we can't do, or something to that unseemly effect. We're not looking down upon, we're simply looking up. And indeed, that statement is correct. But I can't shake the feeling that something is off there. When it comes down to it, I don't think it's a very good thing to rely too much on the word genius. Moreover, not all geniuses are so evaluated, or rather, most genius goes unnoticed. Meanwhile, those who archive some sort of result are arbitrarily given the label, and people forget that it's really a complex issue based on factors such as effort and environment, none of which should be written off as genius, if you ask me. Now, it really is a complicated issue, so I won't get into the nitty gritty of it, but when a person sets out to do something, You've got to consider natural born talent, skill and effort, not to mention luck and fate as well. So it seems to me that the term genius is putting it all too simply. That said, you may find yourself a bit surprised by the number of times that word comes up in this book. You've got Ibuki Kanami, Sashirono Yoyoi, Sono Yami Akane, Himane Maki, Kunigi Satomo and Aikawa Jun. The narrator uses every possible opportunity to other things like because she was a genius or that's just what you'd expect from a genius. But as to whether or not these women are truly geniuses, well, that's a sketchy matter. From their personal standpoint, it's probably more like, if you just do whatever you want all the time, you'll be labelled as a genius. Or no, I'm sure they'd probably have more to say about themselves. But if you ask Ibuki Kanami about it, she'd probably just say, What do you mean, genius? You're just extra dumb. Kubikiri Cycle is an instalment in the Zarigato series that depicts geniuses gathered on an island, and yet, there isn't a single genius there. In having this book published, there were so many people looking after me, that this author almost doesn't know whom to thank. If this book could be called anything good, it's thanks to the efforts of these people, as well as the bookstores. Incidentally, this puts me in a nerve-wracked mindset, that if this book turned out to be bad, it's my fault alone. But at any rate, I would like to extend my utmost special thanks to the editor-in-chief, Katushi Ota, for his goodwill and guidance, and Ryusi Seryoin for decorating this book with undeserved endorsement. Nishuation.